This is the world of the campus vets. It is an emergency and it requires a whole lot of hands and a lot of expertise that regular private practices generally don't have. This is Lucky. Lucky ran into a porcupine last night. I didn't think they'd get that big. It's got to be more than six feet high. At the Western College of Veterinary Medicine, time can be a scarce commodity, as students and owners join together in an urgent struggle to save an animal's life. Marion Kopeck is rushing her 10-year-old Arabian to the college's large animal clinic. She fears Sonic is suffering from colic, a leading cause of death in horses. Sonic's increasing abdominal pain is troubling to Marion because of her special bond with the gentle-natured horse. Yeah, we've had him about five years, and um, I'd had a couple riding accidents before I got him, and he was the horse that got me back into riding. I'd pretty much given up on it. Yeah, he's, uh, he's been a, a great little guy. Vet student Colleen Duncan is part of the team assigned to treat the horse's colic. Colic is really just a, it's a bellyache, but sometimes the gut will actually twist or become impacted in such a way that the animal can't correct it on their own. Realizing the severity of Sonic's condition, Marion agrees to emergency surgery. They've decided to go to surgery, which is a very big step for an owner. It's thousands of dollars just to lay your horse down on the table. At the small animal clinic, a new patient with a very sore nose is arriving. This is Lucky, and uh, Lucky ran into a porcupine last night out in a field. It was dark, and uh, I was out with him, but he was way off in the distance, and I didn't realize what happened until it was too late. My wife and I actually got about half of the quills out of his nose. Then, uh, you know, he wouldn't let us touch him again. Hopefully the people at the clinic here can uh, figure out a way to do this. I'm sure they've got lots of experience with porcupines. Hi, David. Yeah. My name is Lori. I'm one of the fourth years. Right. And you aren't so lucky. No, no, no. Not so lucky. Okay, well, you can come on down. We're just going this way here. As a student in the teaching hospital, Lori will do the initial exam and assessment on her own. When you pulled them, are you pretty confident you got the whole thing out? You got like um, the except pointy the ones tip? That you couldn't find, but the ones that we pulled out, most of them came out clean. Right, okay. That's what we want. Um, one of the biggest problems with the quills is when they get pulled is sometimes you can leave little bits That's under right. the skin and yeah. um, what can happen yeah. with that is you can get an infection, yeah. abscesses, and sometimes they can migrate. Alrighty, so it looks like we've got, yeah, the ones that you broke off are still yeah, I think you can very still salvageable, yeah. so. Before Lori can proceed with treatment, she must review the case with a supervising veterinarian. Meanwhile, in another part of the clinic, resident Dr. Mark Smith examines RC, a dog with long-term hip problems. He's been lame for a long time, or? He's been lame for a long time, ever since he was a puppy. We'll just roll him on his side here. Some dogs, especially male dogs, they don't like, uh, it's a dominance issue. They don't like to be <laughs> laid on their side. So, <laughs> hey, 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 relax, there you go. Well, we'll just do sort of a, a quick feel right now and then we'll see. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, okay, we'll just let him Dr. out. Dr. Smith just, suspects that the dog's hip is badly arthritic. And uh, we'll have a look at the, uh, the x-rays and discuss uh, surgical treatment options with the, uh, with the owner. A total hip replacement may be a treatment option for RC if his owner can afford it. Dr. Smith is accompanied by faculty surgeon Dr. Trevor Bebchuk. Hi. Found him. <laughs> it's time for them to break the news to the dog's owner, Catherine. Great. Well, we've had an opportunity to take a look at RC's radiographs, and uh, normally these joints, we see a relatively round ball fitting into a socket that fits nice and tight. Great. And you can see on both his joints that there's a fair bit of new bone, and that's indicative of uh, moderate 
to severe osteoarthritis in the hip joint, and, and that's consistent with hip dysplasia. Based on the history and what we see on these radiographs, our expectation is that we'll be proceeding with a total hip replacement. He's a very active dog. He likes to play with other dogs and jump around. And all of a sudden, he stopped doing that one day, and he just started laying down. So being that he's only six and a half years old, I thought it would be worth it to do the surgery. Catherine was all set to buy a camper for her truck, but RC's hip replacement will cost upwards of $3,500. Hope you know you're worth this. This is my camper. <laughs> Lori describes Lucky's dilemma to her supervisor, Dr. Genevieve Hammond. There's a few that he did break off, um, but he said that most of the ones that broke off um, are still above the surface of the skin. Okay. Looks good. Hello. Hi. All right. So basically, what we need to do is we need to sedate him. Lucky's porcupine encounter has left him in a painful position. With the owner's consent, it's up to Lori to root out every last quill. An hour after arrival, Sonic is prepared for emergency intestinal surgery in a race to save his life. And as you can see by this whole process, it's, it's a big major surgery, it is an emergency, and it requires a whole lot of hands and a lot of expertise that regular private practices generally don't have. Outside, Marion and stable owner Karen Wager anxiously watch the operation on a video monitor. When you're kind of sitting there watching it, it's almost like you're watching a show. You know, you're looking at the parts, and we had students sitting there, so they're kind of making comments, and you're like, well, is that good? You know what they found, or is that bad? Dr. Jeremy Bailey is the on-duty large animal surgeon. He's joined by a team of doctors, including Dr. Kelly McClellan. That's a piece of small intestine that was like, trapped and has obviously been deprived of blood supply. That's very bad. Can I so see that right there, guys? Yeah. See how you can see that? Dr. Bailey quickly assesses the damage to the small intestine, and the source of Sonic's pain becomes apparent. Deprived of blood supply, 20 feet of dead tissue must be removed, or the horse will not survive. So that's necrotic and looking like it's going to rupture. In the OR, the surgical team is working to save the life of a 10-year-old Arabian. Dr. Bailey has succeeded in removing the dead tissue, but will Sonic be able to survive the loss of 20 feet of intestine? A Shepherd Collie Cross named Lucky had an unlucky encounter with a porcupine. Now that the dog is anesthetized, Student Lori Gould attempts to remove the quills embedded in Lucky's snout. There we go. So that's kind of what you want the end to look like. You can be fairly confident that you got the, the whole thing when it's nice and pointy. Basically, you want to hold pretty close to the base, and I kind of go pretty steady pressure because you can you kind of have to be careful you don't move it back and forth too much because that's how you can kind of snap them off. Yeah, that one came nice. So, just the bad ones. So we should have one right here, and then that one there. If you want to grasp it right by the base there. It's okay, we can go over here with you. Better than get it. Oh, yeah. wonderful. I... No, I think we got them all. I think we're good. Good. We can just let him wake up. So it looks like we got them all. Um, even the ones that he had broken off and that there was just a little bit out at the end. Hi there. You waking up? Okie dokie, he's lifting his head up already. With Lucky, um, the fact that we got them all out so nice and clean is, is a positive thing. I guess we can't be absolutely sure that there aren't one or two um, sort of hiding on us, but um, right now we think we're, we're pretty confident that we got them all. Lucky's back on his feet and he's recovering nicely. Um, he's still a little on the wobbly side, as you can see. Um, so we're gonna watch him for the next little while and we're gonna give his dad a call and, 
Um, let him know that Lucky will be able to go home today. Um, and then hopefully he'll have no more encounters with porcupines and won't have too many bad memories of having been here. So he did really well today. RC is anesthetized in preparation for his total hip replacement. Once we have the acetabular cup cemented in the pelvis and the femoral stem cementing in the femur, we place the femoral head on the femoral stem and then we can reduce them and this is the joint we're left with, a freely moving ball and socket joint. Under the direction of Dr. Bebchuk, the complex orthopedic surgery will take at least three hours, longer if there are problems. The challenges we face are to really be careful about making our implants fit properly and certainly in surgery there are risks of uh, bone fracture, emboli as we place the bone cement. Uh, I'm primary surgeon today. Um, and my role is to uh, instruct the residents and students in terms of the procedure and also to do the majority of the procedure and uh, to make sure nothing goes wrong. Dr. Bebchuk removes the bad joint from RC's hip. So that's quite an ugly looking hip. In this type of surgery, infection is a serious risk. The surgical team wears double masks and gloves throughout the operation. We also have antibiotic in our bone cement that will be released slowly over time and hopefully combat any contamination that may have occurred during surgery. Okay, it's go time. <laughs> Dr. Bebchuk injects the cement, which takes about 12 minutes to set. While he waits, he holds the hip steady. Any movement could result in a loose fit, increasing the risk of a future dislocation. How many minutes, Corey? 11 and a half minutes. And now that it's in, I need to test and make sure that it doesn't come out very easily. I can lift the dog off the table, which is a good sign. With a new hip securely in place, Dr. Bebchuk leaves resident Dr. Mark Smith to close up. The surgery is done, but Dr. Bebchuk won't know if the operation is a success until he sees the next set of x-rays. Two and a half hours after the first incision was made, Sonic is wheeled to the recovery room. It's good to have it over with, but uh, I, I think now he's, he's got some struggle ahead of him. Um, they had to take out the 20 feet of, of his intestines, and it's now whether or not the, the rest of it's going to work like it's supposed to. Sonic must now make it through the acute stage of recovery. He will need round-the-clock care during this decisive period. The next 72 hours are critical to Sonic's survival. While RC recovers, the surgical team determines whether the expensive total hip replacement has been successful. I'm very happy with our femoral stem placement. We can see that there's really good cement fill, nice and distal to the stem, and our acetabular placement is very acceptable. So uh, overall quite happy. Should do very well. Meanwhile, RC's owner is finally nearing the end of a five-hour drive to the clinic. We're going back to pick up my puppy, see if he still loves me. See his new haircut. Hey, bud. Boy, who's that, huh? Thank you for everything you guys have done. Well, it went very well. Um, the surgery was uncomplicated. The uh, implants all fit very nicely, and we have very good mobility, and the cementing all went very nicely, so I expect RC to do very well. Good boy. I've heard how large they are, but I've never actually seen them, so it could be rather surprising. In the large animal clinic, vet student Alan Chacon faces one of his biggest challenges. I didn't think they'd get that big. It's got to be more than six feet high. Ernst the ox weighs just over a ton. It sounds like a lot, 
but Ernst has been refusing to eat, and he has recently lost 500 pounds. His owner suspects that lameness could be the problem. Dr. Ted Layton is a pathologist at the vet school, and he keeps a pair of oxen at his ranch. Now, this was actually a project of my daughter and myself. She is now uh, growing and off to college, but, uh, and I'm at home with the oxen, uh, sort of like the family dog. Working under the supervision of Dr. Chris Clark, Alan will have to put the pieces of this gigantic puzzle together. What they're looking for is a little bit of a mystery. And this is the first step in determining if we can find out what the problem is. In a nearby stall, Sonic is recovering from surgery in which 20 feet of intestine were removed. Vet student Zoe Clark has been caring for Sonic during this critical period. They say probably less than a 50% chance of surviving after surgery like that. And he's just, he's looked better than most horses after a less complicated surgery do. So he's done awesome. Hey. Are you ready to come home? He's bright and alert and his temperature's been normal and he's kind of, He's still in a critical period, but he's after the really critical period where he needs to be watched around the clock, so he's ready to go home now. I'm sure glad to get up here and, and see him for myself and, you know, make sure he's fine. Glad to, to be getting him home. Sonic means an awful lot to me. Um, he's really important because without him I wouldn't be riding. And uh, I guess I owe all of, all of that to him. I would uh, I have paid any, any kind of bill to get him back. Next, the orphan lamb with broken legs is now ready for a big move. Lambertus is going home. They call him Lambertus. It had one injured leg, and then they think that its mom stepped on it and now has three broken legs. What we did is we made him some splints out of small animal cast material. And he follows everybody around like a dog, and he's totally cute. He's growing quite well, because whenever he makes a noise, somebody feeds him. <laughs> he's quite a character. Um, it's very playful. Hi, Lambertus. Hey, little buddy. Let's go. <laughs> it's been seven weeks since the orphan lamb arrived at the vet college with three broken legs. Now he's as good as new and ready to go home with vet student Leah Gowen. <laughs> she doesn't want to go. <laughs> I decided to adopt Lambertus because I felt like he needed a home, some place that he could stay for his whole life. Hi, Lambert. It's OK. Good boy. I just wanted him to be a pet. Lambertus will live with Leah and her husband at their farm. I think Lambertus will like the farm. It will be different for him. Yeah, I'm on my way. We're also planning on getting more sheep. Then he'll have some friends. There we go. OK, Lambertus. Ready to go? He'll be able to live out his days as a sheep on a farm. <laughs> Back inside, the team tries to inspect the hoof of Ernst, their one-ton patient. But it appears that he is as stubborn as an ox. See if he'll lift his foot like that. If you wouldn't mind, if you just... Ernst has been to the clinic before. His lameness was attributed to an abscess in his right front hoof. There we go. Do you want to wrap it? We're just examining his foot just to uh, see if there's any evidence of local infection. I mean, when we last trimmed his feet, we found a small crack at the back of his heel here. And this is actually healing quite nicely. Uh, Dr. Clark thought he had solved it last time when he found that abscess in the front foot. And he, by all accounts, he should have gotten better. And the fact that he's not moving as well as we'd like him to is, is a bit of a mystery. They decide to investigate back, some right. suspicious tissue on the hind leg. Yeah, no. Just be careful kneeling because you can't get up quickly crouch if you're going to get that one. That's it. You know, you can always spring out the way. <laughs> I was thinking you just take a biopsy of that. Alan is given the job of taking his first biopsy. I don't know if that'll explain the lameness or not, but maybe give us some answers. Okay. Oh, hold on, Ernst. No, I think we're okay. It's just. Oh, there's no easy way to do this. The team hopes that by solving the problem of the lameness, 
Ernst will regain his appetite. Okay. What's the best way of wrapping this here? Just, just keep going around the ring. This is only going to stay on. Nope. <laughs> Not even. If he continues to be lame, then they may want to look at some other things, some muscular problems or some skeleton problems higher up the limb. Now Ernst is back at the ranch with his companion Heinrich, but questions still remain. It's still quite mysterious. I wasn't sure he was going to, to make it, but he did so far. So he's got a long way to go, but his appetite has gotten much better. The biopsy told us that indeed his skin was a mess, but uh, didn't tell us why. Now we're letting nature do its thing, I guess. And as long as we don't interfere with that too badly, maybe all will be well. The cause of the young ox's recent lameness and rapid weight loss may be murky, but one thing is clear. Ernst is back with his family, where he belongs. Straight boy, straight. Back, back. 